Brock Glover here getting ready for the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Track Walk from Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough, Massachusetts and also round 13 of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Championship and round 6 of the 250SX East. But I have a great co-host, a local rider here, Jimmy Dakotas, and uh, welcome. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's great to be out here. It's, I'm excited to uh, get out in the mud with you guys and, and enjoy it. It's, uh, it's good to be back in, you know, not my home city, but my home state. And uh, it's nice to just drive, short drive to be here and hang out and not have to fly like I've been here. It's been well, good. Well, you grew up not too far from here. Obviously, people know you from the legendary Southwick track that's not too far from here. But uh, you're about 50 miles from where you grew up, right in Peabody? Yes, I am. I'm about 50 miles. About right now on a Friday, it probably takes two hours. Uh, but normally, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get there. So right, kind of right in my hometown area. And I got a lot of history here. You know, I grew up watching Tom Brady and the Patriots. So to be here in this, in this stadium is, is really special. Yeah, this is a pretty special place right here. I mean, uh, the Supercross here, this is our seventh time coming back to the Boston area. And uh, do you know when the very first Supercross in this area was? I don't. I actually do not. I probably should know that answer. <laughs> in 1983, way back when. And yes, I was racing it. <laughs> you were? Okay, <laughs> good. All right. I did ride 1983. And that race was won by David Bailey. And they came back the next year in 1984. And David won again that year. But the 83 was a, a tough season. It was a, a close championship. Mark Barnett was actually leading. Yeah. And unfortunately, his transmission tied up, I believe, in qualifying. But he wasn't even and uh, so he ended up going in with the championship lead and losing it, and then David Bailey was able to hang on to it for the so heat. He the main event because he couldn't get back out in time? Yeah, the, back in the old days, if you didn't make it through the heat race, you didn't get to go to the next level of the semi or the LCQ. So it was a little different back then. They did change the rules because of that. Which makes sense because if you have yeah. a DNF and a heat yeah. race, you're yeah. done for the night, when really you may have yeah. time to get ready for the LCQ, that could be really frustrating as a rider and as a team. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, get me back later, many years later, 1990, John Michelle Bill won. And then we skipped 25 years before we showed up at this new stadium uh, here in 2016. But uh, it's Roxton one. So, uh, wow, one thing about it, I know, it'll be really 25 years later. So, it's been a while. The one thing you can definitely tell just by looking down at our feet and our ground, and you didn't we're quite wet. wear your mud shoes. It's no, wet. I got my track walk shoes yep. on. They were nice shoes at one point, but now they're, uh, <laughs> they've been relegated to track walk shoes. So uh, yeah. The starting line area, we've had a lot of rain here in the last couple of days. A lot of wind. It's been all over the East Coast. I mean, if you're watching the Masters Golf Tournament, you've seen the wind and the gusts there and the rain, and they had to delay the start of the tournament. Seems like it's gone all up and down the east coast. Okay. So the it's good news bad. is, yes, it's an open stadium. But now you can see up here, we're actually getting blue skies and it's starting to feel warmer than it was earlier in the day. Yeah, and I feel like this is obviously the worst part of the track by a mile. I feel like everything that's up, all the rhythms, the sand, the wooks, everything's basically a lot drier than what we're standing on now. It's been covered. They pulled, started so pulling the tarps sense. off about two or three o'clock in the afternoon. The weather forecast looked like zero rain. Of course, they pulled the some of the tarps yeah. off. One little two or three minute dump happened uh, just to make sure to throw a little uh, salt in the wound. Right. But in general, right here, this is our start. Entire length of the stadium oh, right. one. It is. It's 300 foot long start right here into a big sweeping wide, wide corner right here. This is actually part of the track that actually crosses right here. We'll talk about that later. But this whole section right here, big, big flat start, which I like. I love that. It yep. gives guys options, right, to where they can come out wide here, they can cut down, and I believe it's safer. When you have these short starts, like, um, so my, oh, what year was it? We had a, a Dallas, a Arlington start one oh, year. Everyone crashed on the start. Everyone yep. crashed on the start. Well, happened in Detroit this year. The it's first the round had the same thing. And it's like, man, we continue to see these starts pull through this to us every weekend. We continue to keep doing them. Let's keep, let's make a change. And so I really like the long star. I think okay, long right here. It looks terrible right now. It's sloppy. Well, by the time that. tomorrow the dirt works crew, they'll be pushing this off and they'll be working some new dirt in here. And this will be fine. This is obviously where some of the tarps uh, wear it off. Oh, yeah, exactly. You got seams and in the tarps. Honestly, if they race tonight on this soil with 
by the time the heat raises were over, mm -hmm. Dirt Works comes in, does their magic like they always do, yep. we'd be on a dry track to main event. So I'm telling you, man, yeah, this, <laughs> with the soil up here, especially in England, it can when they turn it up, like we've seen here in past years, yeah, it gets yeah. dry. Yep. So I think this soil will actually, this is really good for our for our race tomorrow because you don't want this to be a boneyard and dry like it has been in the past. Right, time. this right here is right here about the, well, the whole shot line will be right around here, about 450 feet, so the start, um, you know, coming off of this, the one thing you talked about, the riders, the East Coast 250 race coming in yep. here. We've got the 450s, just a standard format, but we do have Supercross Futures. So this is the fourth, I think, Supercross Futures before the final event, but we're going to see them at Salt Lake City. So we do have some extra bikes on the track, which will help dry the track out. I got out. a question regarding Futures. Is this uh -huh. something that I don't know of, you uh -huh. know, being an industry? Do they modify the tracks for the future riders to make them tame, or do they make them exact same and nope. Futures have to deal with it? They have to deal with the matter of fact, that's the, what futures, I thought, so. the Futures riders, as we come off this right here, if you see, this is completely firm, hard, yeah. no this mud is, whatsoever. This is what it was going to be. Yep. They'll be adding water to this yes, part by the time will. the race is over tomorrow night. But Futures, they ride, they're the only riders, they ride four times on the track, actually. They get a free practice. Two, two free, right? Yep, two free practices. They book in the free practice session. That's smart. Before they start qualifying. So the guys get plenty of time. They need more time as them yep. being rookies and new. So yep, exactly. So here we got the uh, section here. Our first time we're really getting a chance to be. They had the track completely covered. They didn't want anybody down here. No press day today. It was all canceled. So you can see here, on off section there. I'll do a knob here to try to get you to jump off and then it's kind of opposite here because yeah. they give you a little lift on the left side nothing on the I right like this I think this is really but look at here they do the opposite they give you a lift on the you know little kicker there on the right and nothing on the left so it's gonna it's, I don't it's know gonna ask of two options I, yep. I think personally what they're gonna do over here is go over the tabletop uh -huh. and then hit the big one and go three two or two three and then this one's gonna allow them to stay low and go on on off but to me, that off is really, really big, and I think that's gonna cause a lot of problems tomorrow yep. night. And again, the seams of the tarps are down here. Yep. But so this is where all the mud's at. You know, you kind of pay attention to that. You say, okay, we'll try to see if it ruts up. This will obviously have some effect yeah. into it too, this Look, wetness even here. Even as wet as it looks right here, if you step on it, you don't it's sink got a, in. It, no, it's, it's got, got a base. Got a base. Yeah. yeah, it's gonna be pretty good tomorrow. So you know this dirt very, very well, as you yeah. said, trying to oh, yeah. growing up here. Turn pro in 09? 09. So 09, 2009 yeah. I did Unadilla, Steel City, and Southwick. Okay. And Bud's Creek. And uh, you raced like 10 years and then you what did you do for three years? Go live on the beach and then you came back uh, and busted no, a couple more nationals. It was, it was a little different than the beach. I got my Lyme disease and I got sick with that. Ooh, so um, okay. that was actually why I retired. Okay. And um, that was where I had my three year hiatus. And then I got healthy and I decided while I was away, I kind of decided that I love this sport. I love being a part of it. I love being a racer, but I didn't want it full time anymore. Yeah. And so it was actually really good for me. I got healthy, yep. came back, and then I decided, you know what? I still can do this. I'm healthy enough now. I don't want it to be my full-time job, but I want to go and give it back to the fans a little bit. And that was why I did Southwick and Unibill. Yeah. Just to kind of... So your position right now with yeah. Star Monster Energy, Star yeah. <laughs> Offerings, I'll get yeah. that one right, is you're kind of a VIP program coordinator? Is that yeah. because I see you out here every week every giving weekend. tours to all sorts of VIPs from Star, right? Yeah, yeah. So I strictly work with Yamaha and Star VIPs. We do... Um, we do every race basically except for Detroit because of the pit, the pit area there. Um, but it's basically through feldexperiences.com. Okay. And yeah, I basically, when they started the program, they were trying to find someone to do it and they really wanted to have like an ex rider, someone that was in the industry that can. Yeah. There's times where we do a meet and greet with Tomac or Webb and they're not in the best mood, you know, it's of course. They're dirt bike riders and, yeah. you know, we'll adjust the day and try to work around them and stuff like that. So I think me being in the position of a past racer, it helps with the riders and with the fans. Um, but basically, we allow fans to come in and join a part of Star Racing for the day, and I'm their host for the day. So I take them. That's cool. We do lunch, we meet the riders, we learn about, you know, all the cool parts, what they're doing, certain tires that Eli's running that maybe other guys don't. Yeah. We do all different stuff that, cool. you know, and our team is cool because we give very unique perspectives on, on stuff that a lot of people don't know behind the scenes. So I feel like, um, I feel like that's really cool that fans get to learn stuff that a lot of the general public doesn't quite know well, you got to bring one of your groups by we'll give a tour of the double okay. truck love to do that behind the seat. Love so to coming off this section here we had table table and then another probably four footer then it looks like it's going to three 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 so it's pretty even here we're always talking about trying to avoid that five footer that big one but it's interesting yeah it's almost like uh, you know the 
as they get smaller and smaller, as they go through. Yeah, they're, they're, that yeah. tabletop is very tall, and it yeah, comes the down table, the whole way. Yeah, the double tables that are taller than normal, and then again, it goes to a four and about, what do we call them, three, 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 it's right in the, yeah. the four, it's, the four very, three footers. I love how they built this too, because if you do the fast line, which is the on, on, off, the rhythm, uh -huh. you're forced to go three, one, uh -huh. or two, two, where if you go over the table, uh -huh. you can do a three, two, and it kind of, They've been building the tracks a lot better this year, and I feel like giving the guys more options, yeah, and yeah. that's that's really all we want. Yep, into right into the Falcon tires, 180 corner right there. God, we're all excited, at Dunlop. I mean, if you don't know, Falcon is our sister, to our right. automotive brand, and they just won a JD Powers Award for like the top tire of OE fitment. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. So yeah, the, the especially our Wild Peak. It's a yep. very popular off-road tire for the for the, the guy who wants to have his truck look not tough and, and, and have a, a good street ride, but still look uh, still look the part. So, great product. So coming off that corner there into a two, now we go into this off again. This is a five, four, three. Yeah. And then it looks like a three, whatever, I'd say we're on a four. So three, four, five, four, three. So it's just basically the- uh, Yeah, I mean, progressive. The main line here would be the two, three, two but you're going to uh -huh. hit all the bigs doing that so yeah. i think they're going to have to do either a three in which is going to be tough with the yeah. track conditions yeah. or it's just going to be a two two and then they're going to three out because you got to avoid one of these big ones here when like you here. look at this thing you see that coming out of that falcon bowl corner there and you go it's a three footer and you're trying to clear a five footer and it's not like i mean it's not if you come up short on a three footer, you got a chance. Yeah. You, you start up coming up that. short on this five footer here. And I, I would say these are some of the most intimidating rhythms in Supercross, right. is the three out of the turns. Because yeah. you mostly, you have to seat bounce them. I mean, some guys can stand them, but they're mostly seat bouncing them. Uh -huh. So it's really important here to, to execute these three hits, especially in the 450. Class. So I want to I wanna brag on you a little bit okay. here. So get Lyme disease, which yeah. I didn't even know, and okay. I apologize. That's okay. That's a serious, I know yeah, that's it was a serious tough. battle. It was really feel, tough, so. The people I know who have had it, I mean, they just feel so exhausted exactly. all the time. It's yeah. just draining on you. But coming back last year, <laughs> you show up at Southwick. <laughs> they throw you in the B practice I know. at Southwick. I know. What, what were they thinking? And you go down, lay the fastest time, and you get first in the main event. Or all, you know, out of all 40 riders, you laid the fastest qualifying time in Southwick last year. And I don't mean coming off the couch, but it's not like you've been racing that much. No, so it's pretty impressive. Been. Very impressive. It was it was a little bit of both. I joke around it was off the couch, but I was secretly preparing. Um, I kind of <laughs> knew for about six months that I was going to oh, do it. Okay. But I was also doing this job last year too, so I wasn't yeah, able to yeah. pre prepare as much as I wanted. And then I had my own business at home during the week, so yeah. the preparation was really low, but we still were able to do it, and I was very happy to, to come out and, and get to qualify first and then get a top 15 overall. That was cool for me. Yeah, looking exciting. back at this, we're coming out of a small three, four, five. We can see the tall five, and it goes four, three, five, three. Sounds like a Tommy two, Tony. Right? Eight, six, seven, <laughs> five, three. I'm saying, <laughs> throwing out these numbers. but. It just looks like if you could come over and get up on the three, that maybe you could go three to three and miss that five at the final. But the then, way to do it. yeah, but then you got to check up coming out of, the coming out of that turn, yeah. do a two-two. But now here, there's another story here. This looks a little swampy right here. But again, the wind's blowing. It's gonna help dry it yeah, out. It's gonna get better. They'll work this in the morning before anybody hits the track. But we're Kind of it, it really is like if you look here this yeah. whole section this rhythm anything yeah. that's a, not at the surface of the track is really really good and tacky and i think they're going to be watering the rhythms about halfway through tomorrow you cut across there because i okay. saw the shoes you're wearing I yeah i hear about these 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 boots right here could tell a million stories walking lots of fun tracks including some grand prix tracks in europe i won't get rid of them so Gonna skip trying to walk up that slimy thing. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. I do it every weekend, it gets sketchy. Yeah, that one looks <laughs> real sketchy. A little standing water down here at the finish line. But coming right off the finish line jump there, kind of our routine standard. The 60 footer, but you always say they're routine. They're routine. And then what happens last time, it, uh, they feel like the, they're routine. Well, the Triple Crown, think about what that finish line jump, how it changed oh, things yeah, around, right? Oh yeah, you're right, I didn't think of that. We had a mechanical- I'm just thinking about executing it. We're at a mechanical failure, 
and uh, a bike was down and, uh, and they threw a Red Cross flag because of a dangerous situation. Yep. And boy, that uh, changed things that around. That changed it a big time. Yeah, that brought that 450 championship. Sure, right tied up. Right back into a into a close one. I think the championship points now are down to, down to eight. eight. That's, uh, that was something. That's I, exciting. It is exciting. For the fans. It's yeah. exciting for the fans. For the yeah. teams, it's stressful. It's very stressful. And then uh, I like that line. I'm following you. Yeah. Go wide here. I like the line choice. So coming off the finish line here, this is almost a 180. Small knob in the middle, bump there. And I like the knobs yep. too. I really yep. do. I feel like they've been, especially in these conditions, that's going to get really rutted on the inside. Well, it's St. It, Louis. It's Remember St. Louis? Yeah. It made auctions. Yeah. It had three full options at St. Louis where the guys would go wide, some of them rolling over the inside. They had three really good corners, very, very similar corners, almost identical to this at St. Louis. And it turned out as simple as that little, you know, feature of that knob on the middle. It made a really uh, great line, great options, three different lines for the riders to ride. You know, so I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of this thing, what I'm gonna say next, but I, I prefer easy tracks because I feel like it can keep the field tighter. And I like to watch guys back. But that's I, just me. Well, you must have been. But you, I don't you, like the nine you must, you must must have watched a few of my watch. I, again, the faster tracks that are a little bit easier makes the racing much, much closer. That's how I feel. And the, it, maybe have an easy track with some big whoops to separate. Yeah, but it, you know, it depends on what you're after. You know, you want, the best, you want the best rider to win, I get it. But you also want the race don't, to be You excited. don't want the best rider to lap up to eight people. Yeah, that's true. So coming out of this corner right here, cuts across the starting line into a right-hand corner. Again, just some standing sloppy water here. Um, again, they'll scrape it all off, work it all in. They got the tarps off tonight. They kind of yep. knew Mother Nature's getting better and better as we're walking in the track even. So we're uh, got a little breeze in here. I wouldn't want to have to kick field goals in this place without open stadium with swirling oh, around. That's man. the whole part of this stadium. That's the element. Is it? That's yep. why they love it. Yep. Okay. They want the cold. They want the wind. They want the rain. They want it all. <laughs> the new fans love to take it in. So yep. Coming into here, this is triple right here. Always again. I say it every week. Right. It's like it's way farther than it is. They make it look easy. And I'm also a big, big fan. I say that walking the track is more intimidating than riding the track. Inside the goggles, or I think he had a term it's, for it. Yeah, it is true. When you have your goggles on, track's easier. When you're walking it, I always, I always kind of joke around. I'll see the top guys, all the 450 guys looking at a three, and they're all sizing it up on track walk. And I'm like, you guys are gonna hit that on the first lap. Why are you even looking at it? <laughs> and they do. They, and do. they do. They do. Absolutely. So coming right off this triple, we're right next to the starting gate. So uh, I guess this would be the east end of the stadium, I think and uh, starting gates right there so we're doing in a 180 and now we start heading down another section of the track the far end is the longer section i think it's like 700 feet long along that sideline and then this sideline looks probably about another maybe 100 feet shorter because it's going to turn at the end do a little u-turn and just like we've seen a couple of times this year where they're having a back and forth across the starting line uh, it seems to be uh gives the gives the track makers the designers a little more distance yeah so when you're when you're starting to have the football stadiums get a little smaller footprint and they struggle to make the tracks you know the 1800 feet 1900 exactly. feet like they want so them in the this baseball is close to 2000 foot track it's a little over 2000 so to get them over 2000 to get the lap times up into the 50 second ranges in the mid 50s last year or two years ago when we were here in 2022 I think Chase qualified at 49 something. I think yeah. he was the first rider to only rider all day to break that to break it. And then the races were, the, the actual race laps were like in the 52-ish range. Yeah. So I think they're shooting for the 55 second range if they can get it. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I like that too because I think, yeah, I know we're under timed racing now, but when you're doing a 40 second lap time, the track deteriorates so much. It's yeah. it, it's almost yeah. more, they will end up doing 28 laps sometimes. And yeah, I just find like that's a little too much. 25, 26 is, Usually pretty uh, good. Agrees. But I like the time Again, better. coming right out of the corner, same kind of a situation. We go right from a three, five. That's a three. pretty violent belly a, here, too. Yeah. So, yeah, that pocket and that's uh, the 
face of that thing's got a pretty steep tick. To, to me though, I don't think that the three in will be as important here because right. you can stay low, hit the two, with the, be aggressive with the two, and then you can stand that three and then yep. drive right into the whoops. Where yep. if this was another five tall one, then it would be very necessary to the three in so you miss this big one here. But yep. I think here they'll be able to do the two, three, or the three, two, and it'll be equally is about the same. It just depends on how much speed you're comfortable with coming into the whoops if you want to be three and into the whoops or just two and into the whoops. Yeah, if you could get all three over the five and yeah. clear this one as Jimmy you were talking yeah. about, if you could do that, you could launch because right after this next three footer here, we've got this one and the next one right after wow, that is the whoops. whoops. And there's a pretty good wall of them right there. There is. And I like I like the doubling into the whoops because you can land deeper uh -huh. and un, un, uh, compress the bike here and then get back and be balanced rather than coming in having to set up and then wheelie into them. Yeah, we were at Indy and that Martin Davos was talking about that one wall jump they had and he is all he called it. He goes, I think someone's going to jump and the only one who really did it was Jet Lawrence and when yep. he did it, he launched right into the base of this. So this is our like the pre whoop. He was landing right here at right the base of this and when he did it, it unloaded the bike enough that he could get a lot of speed get across right the top. It was quite quick. So heading in here again, pretty firm base here. It so is. it's open the whoops. I, mean, I think it's going to yeah. be really good tomorrow. You're going to have ruts in the middle of the transitions. Uh -huh. But other than that, it's going to be the berms are going to be rutted up, and everything's going to be pretty solid. Well, they've got a, you know not a ton more time, but they do have a little bit more time to work the track. Just a few minutes extra is all and these this guys. Wind is going to help a lot. Is, yep. Right now you can feel the wind kind of swirling around. And more, as I talked about, as we get down into this into the stadium. We talked about kicking field goals. Yeah, you can feel the oh, wind yeah. because this is technically an open-ended stadium. There's a tunnel That's that right. leads out and you know, kind of venturing through the stadium and going out. So this will dry. And I did talk to the people at uh, Dirtworks and in the, in, in the organization, and they did say they wanted to pull the tarps to let the wind and the weather it help. Actually, that here. Right? That's right. So they're watching. They're watching that weather forecast as much as it's easy play. to be in the stands and critique the track crew until you actually do it <laughs> realize how hard it is and the weather changing and yep. current conditions yeah it is so now again we're all every every race from here on out open stadiums so yep. we're gonna deal with it. all natural conditions yeah, yeah. coming out of this corner right here rocking on a to mc shot right into this kind of what has become more of a simple obstacle for these guys at this level. Yep. But you just do a single onto a table with another single that ties itself. Again, it's a three to three and a half, four foot table. Yep. With another. And I like these two. These are cool because you can go over the table, roll inside, uh -huh. a guy can go on off, kind of square you up, and yep. it gives some different options, I feel like. Derek, do not hit the deck, man. That's your goal. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, can you Same get Same with me. I didn't retire to come out here and crash without racing. Get a good view of this right here, Derek, where you can see with, a, again, a single, kind of a, uh, what, more of a standard setup we're seeing on the Supercross tracks nowadays. Single table. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy talked about, come over the single, downside this, then roll the inside in a little tight line there, or if, you, if there's a way to hop on and over. I don't think we've got enough distance for all of them, but every time I say that, somebody, they do it, somebody yeah. does it, well, right? Well, that's like I said with the, when they're all looking at the three ends and then they all jump them, it just looks very intimidating when yep. you're walking and then as you get on the dirt bike, it all kind of it pieces yep. together a lot easier. This will be soft for a while until oh, they yeah. can work it in. This is going to be standing water right here. You're really wet. Some years back when we came in here, the stadium was, they weren't crazy about all the dust and the dirt. No, they did drug, not like that too much. Drug in for a while, but uh, they, uh, they'll, be, they'll be working this dirt and mud out of here for another few days afterwards. Coming across right here, back crossing the starting line. Basically, here is a just over 90 degrees with a slight rut to the right into a wall jump. Slow them down a little bit. I like the ball jumps too. I think they're cool. Do you? Yeah. As long as you can jump them like last, like Seattle. If there's an option to be jumped, I really like them. Yeah. Okay. Well, this here, this would be interesting. You try to jump into this, into the corner. That's you don't want to do that. Quite, no. a, quite a run there. But you got to, if you do, we'll see. Someone might land right into that yeah. corner. Like how last week when Jet was hopping it too. Or uh -huh. Two weeks ago, what? He's hopping yep. it. Yep. And Coop did it a couple times too. I really like that. Just to give them another option, you know. To... Yep, but Seattle. Yeah, it was, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it ended up 
bite them a little bit, the main of that, and they got tangled. I, it <laughs> did, it did. So coming into here, and so we came across the start once, yep. and now we're going back across the start. So this is the first quarter heading this direction. Now we're going counter, what is always counter course, into another section before we hit the one and only sand section. Something, you, something you'd like. This is my favorite section of the track right here. Yep. But I do, I like how the sand sections, um, I like, I prefer a sand section that's straight on like this one. Yep. I find sometimes when they're in a corner, it just, it goes to one line a little bit. Uh -huh. Where when they're in a straight, just a straight sand section, uh -huh. you can kind of have a lot more options. I like well, that. Well, this gives them an opportunity to take a couple of lines high to pivot yep. off of it. And they don't have to do too much turning in the sand and then yes. once you enter it right here. And I think they'll be using the inside here a lot too. Yeah. Trying to shorten the track a lot. So being a 250 guy, I mean you've had multiple podiums and they're all you ironically I remember so much of you riding the Geico Honda, but you had the success on the Suzuki. So yep. tell us about that. Yeah, I actually is funny, I I got a lot of fourth place on Geico, I think five or six of them. Oh, and that was like my joke that he couldn't podium, he's so close he couldn't do it, and then I ended up at the time, it was supposed to go to Suzuki, which was, wasn't the superior bike and everything else, but JGR kind of took me in like family, and they, it was, yeah, the bike might not have been as good as the Geico bike, and I'm not saying that in a bad way because I got better results on it. Yeah. It was really close, and it was just as good as the Honda, but I actually did prefer the Honda better, but I got more podiums on the Suzuki because I was in a mentally better state with JGR and the way that they, you know, approached my mindset and stuff. They were a lot, not so hard on me and allowed me to grow as a rider, and I felt like, that is what excelled me to those podiums, not so much the bike or anything like that. It was more the team environment of JGR, kind of boosting me up, bringing me up. And they yeah, kind of had of me, family deal they had me that. and Justin Hill as kind of like the one and one on each coast. And they really felt like, you know, you can win the championship. And when you feel like that, you start to believe it. And I think that's kind of what's the my big thing. For Supercross versus motocross, what were your preference? I, to be honest, I got better results with Supercross, but I prefer motocross. Yeah. Like, it's so fun to me to be able to kind of just move around and do everything where I feel like Supercross, even as a fan, you're, you can only do so much on the track where motocross, there's so much more to see yeah. and do, but I definitely got better results in Supercross and I just felt like, I think maybe the shorter races benefited me a little bit. I was more of a sprinter and a starter. So I feel like motocross, I definitely preferred, but I did better in Supercross. So I just, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I like it better, but I just did better in it, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh... It's great that you're still in the sport and that we're fans and, and people alike are benefiting from all your experience. I and mean, you've certainly been behind the scenes at a lot of different organizations and seeing how it's done. I mean, the Geico Honda team was obviously the fat oh, level yeah. 250 team. The JGR's been a winning organization in, in, in NASCAR and in motocross yep. too. So that's nice. So coming off in the thing right here, a couple of rollers. And of course, this is going to shift and do all sorts of crazy yeah, This stuff. could be a really cool section. Yeah. Right? And, 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 you know, beside the race here. We've seen a lot of these outside lines right here where the guys hit it and then they launch all the way and it just completely across. It's starting line area into the single and then go from there. We've seen them a, a, a multiple route. Yeah, yeah, doing multiple it. routes are doing this. St. Louis, I think they were Yeah, and they do. I thought Detroit even had a section like, yeah, like this. They're adding, they're adding different sections where, you know, this little site note here, or kind of a side section of the track is you know off the start not used but just to you know once they get going on the race race track and it just seems like it's uh it's a nice fun option we'll that jump the first quarter yeah, it opens up this rhythm allows them to do so many more options right. where if this wasn't a double across it would just be kind of yeah i'm gonna go inside roll and then do what's next well speaking of successful organizations after many years of kind of having some rough patches there the pro circuit team seems to be back on that yeah right now they are back Congratulations to Mitch Payton and all of his team. Yeah. They seem on it with McAdoo now taking over the points lead after his win last time. And they haven't, the East Coast hasn't raced in four weeks. It's been a while. It doesn't yeah. feel like that, yeah. but yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, crown in Indy, and then yep. now it's been four weeks, and then they come on and they do, uh, we've got next week, we've got the, sh the showdown in, in Nashville, Nashville, which yeah. will be fun to see the East and the West go against each other. Peyton Deegan had a nice, uh, you know, for your, the team you were yep. for, had a nice middle, uh, main event there last really time, good one. and really he just good. dominated it, just yeah. not being able to put it together for all three, but I think, I mean, he's got to be due for a win, you say? I would say so, and I, I, I said it before the year that this year would be a little bit harder for him. I knew he had an injury coming in, but last year it was kind of just get podiums, learn, 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 and then now this year it's win, 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 and that mindset change, it's a lot to take on, especially as a young kid. It, so, you know, I never was totally at that level he's at right now. It's really close, but not all the way there. But I understand the aspect of the, 
the nerves and the expectations. So I knew it would be a little bit harder for him this year. Sophomore but, slump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but exactly. Bit, yeah. But I feel like he's actually done really well with, with, with the injury that he had. People didn't know how bad it was and how much he wasn't riding. So I think he's done really well. I just think because he's Deegan and there's so much expectation that if he's not winning, it's like, what's wrong? When that's really not the case. You know, he's got McAdoo to race against and Tom Vial and all these incredible athlete so it's so team no matter who you are and we see with jet too you can be gifted and you might be five or ten percent better than the field ta talent wise or however you want to call it but it doesn't mean you win every time you know this is their bikes and i think that's what it comes down to is it's just guys like to race and i think that's where hayden's good is he knows how to race so but there is a lot of talent on the east coast and it's it's good to see the depth while we have an east and a west because sometimes when you split the coast you can lose the depth and we still have a very good west and east coast so it's yeah. and it's good to see mitch it, back in the mix too it, yeah, it, up. it is he's had a really good run this year and in, in, the, in the 450 class and we thought that we had so many races but we had you know, some seventh time being here in this market never had a first time winner that's I really i don't cool. know if that's going to change so or who not. would be happy to no, I know that. Justin Cooper or Hunter Lawrence? No, first time winner ever. Uh, ever, yeah. We had, so we'd be on Hunter be Lawrence or, or somebody Justin who has Cooper. Yeah, yeah, or Justin Cooper, yeah, I just said yes, exactly. Who else would it be? And, uh, I know. Yeah, there's not many kids. This it, sport, there's not many guys who haven't won that have a potential to win. Yeah, it's it wasn't sport. until that very first round, 1983, that David Bailey won. Yeah, they took over the championship. That's the last time a winner of Foxborough uh, ever went on and won the Supercross Championship too. So oh, okay. The last time so maybe you don't want to win this one. I know, one. it's hard. It's like one of those ones. It's round 13, Matt. You never no, know. No, you want to win them all. You want to win them all. Okay. Let's change history. Well, thank you very much, Jimmy Dakotas, for tuning in. And uh, thank you for watching the Dunlop Motorcycle Tires Track Walk. And we'll see you next round in Nashville, Tennessee at round 14. And again, it's a showdown between the 250 East and the 250 West. So everybody's excited for that. So thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Love